best practices for working with Plan3D and Naviusworks. So I am Paula Magellas, applications expert, and uh, we have uh, Chuck Joling with us as well in the chat, and he's the building solutions team manager. Uh, a bit about imaginative technologies. We are uh, Autodesk uh, Platinum VAR. We have uh, 40 plus years of experience. We have 35,000 plus satisfied customers. We are the Autodesk's largest service partner, largest team of technical experts in the industry, 135 plus. We have a dedicated technical support team, customer advocacy team, dedicated data management, facilities management, simulation and software development teams. We have uh, 32 plus Autodesk authorized training centers, 12 mobile labs and eight online labs. And Ascent is also part of the organization and they are Autodesk authorized publisher. So they publish books for the software that we sell. Your problem solved. We help engineering driven companies pinpoint and address the critical issues impacting their operations through the better use of people, processes, and technology. This will help you reduce cost, improve quality, boost productivity and profitability, enable agility, and accelerate innovation. We offer consulting and professional solutions, BIM and CAD management, building lifecycle management, CAM services, CFT and FEA simulation, content development, data management, facilities management, implementation services, process automation, product lifecycle management, reality capture, software development. We also offer training and support, and we have more than 70 unique courses covering a variety of Autodesk applications. We also have the Imagine It Productivity Now e-learning and support platform used by high-performing and BIM and CAD teams to maximize the proficiency, productivity, and potential of their people. It's a platform where you can learn about different softwares. What's on the agenda for today? So we'll have downloads need, needed for Plan3D Navisworks to optimize uh, the, the most out of Navisworks and the Plan3D. We are creating a live Navisworks link. We will be creating a NWF file. We will be searching within Navisworks and creating sets and uh, dynamic searches. We'll be running some clash detection and uh, we will be using the timeliner. And the, the clash detection is probably the main reason why you're probably using Navisworks. So the download number one is the object enabler. And the AutoCAD Plan 3D object enabler allows Navisworks users to directly retrieve property data while reviewing AutoCAD Plan 3D models. So use this link, I think will be added to the chat and uh, you can download the object enabler for Plan 3D. Download number two, Navisworks NWC export utility. The, so the distributable NWC file explorer can generate the optimized NWC file directly from design applications without needing a license seat of Navisworks. So when you download this uh, NWC explorer, you can go to Plan3D and you can use the command NWC out and, uh, and you can basically create a NWC file type. And we will be using that in a bit. And doing a PowerPoint presentation, but just in a bit, we'll be jumping to Navisworks and Plan3D. And download number three is the Navisworks Freedom. This is different from the software that I'll be showing today, the Navisworks Manage. Um, Navisworks Freedom is a free NWD viewer that can be used to view NWD files. So not NWF, which is the files that we will be creating today which are files that can be created in Navisworks Manage. NWDs contain the 3D models, but without live links, only for people without Navisworks Manage. So if you have Navisworks Manage, don't bother with Navisworks Freedom, but for the people without a license, they will want to use this link to download the viewer. Okay, so options editor in Navisworks. So, when we um, 
when we go to Navi's works, we can go to options. And in options, we have the file readers. And here we can, uh, we, we will be importing DWGs in this case, because we are the context of this webinar is for Plan 3D. So we would be changing the, some of the settings here to, to choose what we want to import when we, when we connect the DWG in Navisworks. So the one setting that I think comes by default, but I unchecked, is to convert XREFs. I don't want my XREFs to be converted, so I uncheck that. And there's different options if uh, you want to merge the, the layers or convert points or lines. You can change those settings here. So it's in the options and then file Follow readers. Up. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't want to interrupt, but why do you not want to convert the XREFs when you bring and, in? Uh, yeah. And the reason why I don't want to convert to XREFs, I'm going to show in a bit, is because uh, one of the XREFs that I'm importing, I will uh, want to first use the NWC out command, which I mentioned previously, uh, this one. So I'm not going to import all of the XREFs. So that's why. Thank you. So let's go to uh, Navi's works and uh, we will be creating our model. So we'll do cancel and uh, we will be appending our model. The model that I'm going to be importing is the this plan 3D file. So there's a bit of piping, there's a structure and some equipment. It's a fairly simple model. And the reason why we're using it is that so people don't get too confused with too much piping running around. So we go to Navis Works and we select append. And uh, I'll just go find my, uh, my Plan 3D project. We go to the Plan 3D models. And over here, notice that there are no NWC files. So I will go and I'll start importing first piping. So we'll open the piping. It's going to take a little bit of time. We can also append different models by just, uh, and notice now there's a NWC file created. We can also just uh, use the control key and we can import or append two files at once. So the reason why I didn't import everything at once is because when I imported the, the structural model, notice that the plate is missing. And this is after installing the object enabler. So we will want to first create an NWC in the structural file, and then we will be removing this one. So we'll remove the structural model. So we'll go to the selection tree, and uh, we'll just remove the structure. We'll also append the layout, which I haven't done yet. So we'll go to related files, layout, and select open, and we have our layout. So let's go to Plan 3D. And in Plan 3D, we'll open the structural model. And now that I have that uh, NWC explorer, I have this command. And if you guys don't install that, you're not going to have access to this command. And uh, I will select presentation, Plan 3D, Plan 3D models, and I'll save it. And I'm going to overwrite the NWC that was created before when uh, I appended to Navi's works. So now I go back to Navi's works and I can just uh, select the pen again and I'll go to the plan 3D models and I'll select the structure. Open and now we have the, the plate showing. There's a, the advantage is that the plate is showing but there's a disadvantage because when we actually appended all of these WGs, there's a live link in, uh, in our file. So let me just save the project first, and I'll show that link in a second. So Navi's works model. So now, when we are working in Plan 3D, we can, for example, we, we made the live link, we forgot about the Navi's works model, and now we are going to copy and start making some new pipes, and we save the Plan 3D model. And now in coordination, because now we've made the link, when we just do refresh, 
and uh, when we refresh, we have the Navisworks model updating. So, and this is for NWF files. But with this, the structure, because we did the NWC out, let's go to the structure and we'll just copy one element, just Back to our plan 3D, we're going to update this and we're going to fix this one over here as well. Just delete it and save it. And once we refresh, everything should go back to before. Going back to our presentation. So we talked about appending the DWGs just to refresh. Use append to import plan 3D files to Navisworks. Save Navisworks files as a NWF to maintain link. And if necessary to send entire coordination model in one file, save as an NWD. And the NWD, you'll save it because you cannot open an NWF in the free viewer. So that would be the reason to use NWD. But when you use an NWD, you will not have the live link that I just showed. So, Plan 3D properties in Navisworks. Because you installed the object enabler, now when you go to the properties tab, when you select an item, you're going to have the AutoCAD properties of Plan 3D. So, over here, when we select an item, if because we have the object enabler installed, we have all the information that is available in Plan 3D. So, you can see the set of the pipe, the spec, etc., the line number. Um, here, a button that will let us find the, the, the properties here in, uh, in the Navisworks model inside Navisworks. So it's similar to quick select in Plan 3D. And this is very important because when we run our clash detections or the timeliner, we will be wanting to find items. We will be saving them as sets. So. We will go to the find items over here, and it opens this window. And uh, to find items, we can run our query. So, for example, we would first select a pipe just to see what uh, the property is and uh, the category. So, the category would be AutoCAD, and we, we can select multiple drawings. We shift and right click, and we select all the drawings, and uh, we select AutoCAD. For the property, we go over here and let's say that we want to find line number. So we would go to line number. The condition, there's different queries that we can do. We can do an equal, not equal contains. So this gives a lot of flexibility in the items that we choose. And in the value, we can just click the drop down arrow and for example, let's just select zero one. And uh, when that is, we have the query established, we can do find all. And it found all the line number zero one. So we have our line number zero one over here. And uh, now we have sets, which is this window that opens. If we close the sets, we can open the sets by managing sets, or we can go to the view tab in windows and we can open sets over here. This is the window where you, you, you can open pre any other window in, inside Navisworks. And uh, so we have our query, we do find all, and now we can save as a selection, which saves the selection of items we have. So line number zero one, or we can save more importantly as a search and uh, search line number zero one. And what this means is that every time we click this button over here, it's going to re-execute the query. So once the model changes, it will uh, find all the line numbers there, zero, one. 
so when you're working in a model and then you the the plant continues expanding you don't have to redo the the selection with this one you have to redo with the search you don't need to redo it and like i said we will be using these sets to run clash detections among other tasks so just to show what i mean by this we'll quickly go to plant 3d and this time we're going to add another pipe again we will add the, the line number to the pipe and we'll say it's 01 save the model back to navisworks now when i select the selection it's only the line number 01 and when we pick the search we search for we basically execute the query again and it shows the this pipe as well so we'll update this model again save this is very important because you don't have to just run the queries over here you can actually import the queries so once you set the queries and they can be fairly complicated in fine items you can then save them as a as a xml and i already saved some so uh, I'm going to select import, import search sets. And now I can just go to my desktop and uh, I'll pick the Navisworks presentation. And I am updating and uh, I have a, a bunch of other queries. So now I, when I select line number 02, the line number 02 is selected. So a company has different standards and they know exactly how to name their line number. So they only need to set this up once or maybe they want to find the three inch pipe. Another thing that you can do is um, you can up, add more than one query. So over here, I just showed one, but you could certainly add more AutoCAD properties. You could say that this time you want the size to be three inches. So you just add the properties and, and so on. And then you would, when you find all, you find the line that you want. So the search, the search sets are very powerful and while you can do the safe selection option if you need to it's recommended to use this one and then you can just export and import to other models okay let's see what else is in the so we have the option to say save selected object as a set recover that Saving searches as sets make set selection dynamic. Notice that the pipe above is also selected when using the search set, as opposed to saving selection for a set. The pipe above is not selected. And the save search sets are, and, you, and use them in different projects. So you can use them in different projects. So when we're using search sets, another thing that we can do is uh, when uh, we pick them, we can change all the properties in, um, in uh, the search set. So for example, over here, when we're in Plant 3D, sometimes we add some valves and notice that the color over here changed. And when building this model, I didn't even notice that. But with the search set, you can just select the, the line number. And I'm guessing this is line number 03. It actually did not add this line number to the search set, so it's not gonna work because I'm guessing it's missing the line number information. But if it was the case, you could just go to override the item and select override color, and you could add a different color to it. And now all the line numbers are orange. And I'm guessing that it's missing the line number over here, or it was input incorrectly, which is why it's not showing. Anyways, so let's go to the presentation. So clash detection. So now we're going to cover clash detection. So we defined our sets and uh, now we can do clash detection. Clash detection is not available in Plant 3D. And it's very important in Navisworks feature to detect clashes of the Plant 3D model. We can clash drawings, properties, or sets. Anything in Navisworks model can pretty much be clashed, except for the, the annotations that we'll be making inside Navisworks. So, so let's conduct a clash over here. So for example, to, 
to do clashes, we'll go to the clash detective over here. I'm gonna save a viewpoint first, just so that I have a normal view. And I'll be closing the sets. So to do clash detect, we select clash detective over here and uh, everything is grayed out. So we need to add a test first and we'll just say walls. So let's do a, we can, in the selection, we'll basically be clashing selection A with selection B. So we can say the set that we selected, the search line number one, we'll want it to clash with the layout, which is the model that contains the walls. And we run the test and we have uh, 10 clashes. So we can jump between the different clashes and we see that, for example, over here, the flange is hitting the wall, it's slightly cut. So we would want to um, maybe add a comment or assign it to um, to move the pipe, move the pipe. So this is part of the same clash as clash one. So we have the option to, all these three are the same. We have the option to group the clashes and we just can just say strainer clash. So we have different clashes that we can see. And uh, we are actually using the set that we added. So using the object enabler, we can clash the different search sets that uh, we made and uh, we can basically, like I said, clash anything. That's why it's important to save the sets. The sets could be equipment, could be the structural model, could be anything in our model, and we can clash it. In this case, I'm clashing the search set number one with uh, the walls. So that's why it's important to have the sets. In the clash, um, in the clash um, detective, we can create reports of our clashes once we check all of them. Um, we can go to the, sorry, we can go to the reports tab and um, here we can select if we want to add the comments or whatever. And in the report format, a very important feature of Navisworks is that we can save all of these clashes as viewpoints. And what that means is that we'll save them here as viewpoints. And the people that are using Navisworks Freedom, the, they are even Navisworks Simulate. They do not have access to the Clash Detective, which is a main feature of Navisworks Manage, and they wouldn't have, uh, they wouldn't be able to create these clashes. So when we write the report, now we close it, and we have the walls with all the clashes. So now, if we save our model as an NWD, we'd have access to our viewpoints of the clashes. So people without the software can also see the clashes that we have. So let's go back to our Clash Detective. And another report that we can create is as a HTML file of all the clashes. And when we write the report, we can save it in our, in the windows. And then the, we have a, a Clash report with a, I added a comment. So let's see the comment assigned to Paulo. So there's a small uh, image as well as all the clashes for our test. These clashes can be uh, imported. There's a, we can also import and export the clash tests. And, uh, and there's a feature in uh, Navisworks that is very important as well. So when we're running clash test, so for example, over here, we saw that the, the strainer was clashing and uh, our plant is very big and we don't know where this item is. We can just right click and uh, we select the focus switchback. And this is very important. So switchback and in my plant 3D model, look what happened. When I use switchback, it opened the strainer and uh, now I can see and all I have to do is just uh, basically move the, the pipe a little bit to the right, we see that the, the clash is happening. We would move the pipe a little bit to the right and uh, we'd be good to go. And then we could go back to Navisworks and uh, go back to our, our clashes and, and basically see other clashes and 
and just move the pipe if we need or move any, any clash that is happening. Right now the clash if they are green and red that can be changed in the options uh, button so if you go under tools clash detective and uh, we can change some of the settings so we can change the there's an animated transition in the clash detective it's by default at two seconds but I changed it to 0 0.5 so it's faster we can also change the color of uh, the of the, the different selections that are clashing other things that we can uh, change in Navisworks so we when we are running the clash detective we can um, dim others so if we run it we dim the color or if we want to hide all the items that are not clashing we can add the transition so if we want animate transition so when we, so right now it's at 0 0.5 seconds but normally it's a lot slower so that's a best practice that you can do is uh, go to the options menu and make it faster you can focus on the clash and uh, yeah, that's the Clash Detective, which, for example, Revit has an interference check, but because Plan 3D, Plan 3D does not have a Clash Detective, you'll absolutely have to use Navisworks for this task. Let's go to our PowerPoint presentation. So we have the selection B in green and clashing with selection A in red. The switchback, as mentioned, is very important. When clashes are found, right-click the element and use switchback to have the element selected in Plan 3D. We can save our reports as viewpoints, and as mentioned, that's important for people that are using uh, the free version of Navisworks, or even people that don't want to run the clashes, then they'll just open the study and they'll have access to all the clashes saved as viewpoints. The viewpoints can then be used to make animations or even used just to check or to add annotations, which I'll show now. So, for example, in Navis Works, you can only make any annotations once you have a viewpoint saved. So we saved the clash and now we go to review. And uh, because we are in, uh, in the viewpoint Clash 5, we can actually use text and we can say um, use pipe support XYZ or something like that. That's not a clash. This is not a real clash, so it doesn't really matter. But just to give an example, we could also make a revision clouds. And we can uh, erase our notes if we, if we choose to. So that's also why it's important to save the report as a, a viewpoint. Once the clashes are saved as viewpoints, we can add markups to the viewpoint. I just covered that. We can have HTML reports. Um, we can change the settings. And uh, now the timeliner. So that was clash detection for Navis Works. That was a very quick overview, but hopefully it gave a good idea of uh, what the software can accomplish. So this is still in the clash detective. Okay, so you might have to press the reset appearance to uh, go back from the clash detective to the normal appearance. So now the timeliner. So another important feature of uh, Plan 3D is the timeliner. Um, and basically what the timeliner does is used to create construction progress animations. So we will be adding our search sets that we initially created we have them over here and now we can add them to a timeline so we have the line number zero one or this one is not a search set so I'm actually going to delete it so I don't get confused we have line number zero two zero three we have support selected we can select 
the equipment. So we will be creating an animation of uh, the, the, our Navisworks model. I'll have to restart Navisworks for, for some reason. Okay. All right, we're back. So let's use the timeliner and uh, we will add a task. So we can add multiple tasks. So let's say first we want to build the walls and uh, we can change how, how the timeliner works. Right out of the box, we have uh, three options, but we can create new appearances. So we can add a new appearance and we can say green 60% or 60%. And I can just say that it's the green color that we want at uh, 60. Select OK. And now we can add the appearance and we give it a new name, new, new build. And uh, this, so this is the start appearance that we'll be creating in our little animation and now we have 60% and when the after when it reaches the date we will want the model to show the model appearance so we can control how it will look and then we can just ask the add the task type here so I'm just gonna ask task type for everything new build new build this is again chart we're not gonna need it right now so I'm just gonna add it so for the walls over here, we can just select the walls and then we add attach current selection. And uh, now we have the walls attached as this task. And now we're gonna say, start building these walls in January 1st and finish on January 15th. And now if we go to our Gantt chart, we're gonna have the walls are gonna start being built January 1st, January 15th. So we're gonna do the same for the equipment, or first the structure. So for the structure, we're actually going to go and just select the, the entire DWG for the structure DWG. So we'll just say structure. And the structure will be built after the walls on January 16th. And that will be built until next the week after. And uh, we will be attaching, and over here we can attach that. We don't have one at the moment for the for the structure. So what we're gonna go do is just select the the structure. And uh, it seems like the walls are actually part of the structure as well. So we're just going to hide the unselected items. And now we're just going to select the wall. We're gonna hide the unselected. We'll do Control Z. I did the selected item, and now we can just uh, use um, um, where is it? The selection we can use select box. So in, in, normally in AutoCAD you can just drag, but here you have to change to the select box to uh, to select some of the other items. So we'll be adding this. like these ones and now we have our structure and we can uh, just select like that as well we'll select our structure and now we can just save that selection and we can just say structure and now when building we can just say attach current selection we didn't even have to pick the the set because it's already there we'll do line zero one these ones will be faster because we already set established the sets line zero two and line zero three. And uh, we'll press an eye doll to show our model. And now over here, we are going to add line zero one. So we right click, attach set, line zero one. This one is line zero two. Oh, not to be confused with, uh, so we want to use the search set that we're using. So that would be search line zero one. And over here, line zero three. 
and we don't need this one, so we're going to just press delete. And uh, now we, we have the Gantt chart, and uh, we can also, in the Gantt chart, we can kind of change the dates if you want. You can just drag and drop. But we'll just be adding the dates here quickly, so that's January 23rd, or 24th, or 24th. And usually I just uh, add the dates a little bit so that it shows in the Gantt chart and then I, I fix the dates after. So that looks good. So when we add that date, we have February, we want to make it January. So we'll go to January 29. And now the date is added, so this is too long, so we're just going to say it's this many days. And last but not least, we're going to be adding the planned date. This one will start on February 5th or 7th, and we'll go until the 5th, 16th. So we have our timeline that over here, and now we uh, and we need to make sure that we have the task type new build, otherwise it wouldn't show anything. And add our Gantt chart, and uh, we're good. So we're gonna go to simulate. And in simulate, we can just press play. We can change in the settings how long the simulation is going to take. Right now it's 20 seconds, that's too long. We're going to change to 10 seconds. And we can override the, the start and the end date. So let's say the end date, let's make it, uh, I don't know, February, March 1st. So we select OK. And uh, now we press play. And this will take 10 seconds. and uh, that's how the building looks. So we, we added. We seems like we're missing the structure, so we're gonna have to go and see what's happening with the structure. So when we select the the different items, they are selected. And for the structure, it seems like the the selection that I made was not correct. So for the structure, we'll just go over here. And structure is selected, and we'll just drag it. Now the structure is also selected. So we'll go to line zero one, it selects. I forgot the equipment, so we'll just uh, quickly add the equipment as part of the selection. So we'll have to change back the select to uh, the, the mouse. We'll just select the equipment. And now that it's selected, we can just say equipment. And we can just create a new task. And we can move the task up. I can just say it's equipment. And we can even build it at the same time. So uh, it will be the 23rd, January 23rd to January 25. And now we will drag our equipment to the selection. And now we can use the Gantt chart again to uh, kind of make this look a bit better. We can just move it like this. And we got to simulate, and now it should work as intended. So it's first a light green, and once it's built, it's uh, basically showing the, the the final model. And again, the the task type over here, I didn't set it. I forgot to set it, so that's why it didn't show over there. So that's how um, that's how it wasn't built properly. Anyways, so uh, now we're going to, we have uh, saved viewpoints. Let's save some new viewpoints for our construction plan. So we are, um, we have the normal view and we can make some new views. So we just save a viewpoint and then we can save another viewpoint over here. But before that, we actually, we should exit the timeline and we'll save the viewpoints. So let's save one here. And then we'll add another viewpoint, maybe over here, viewpoint two, and then we will go back over here and save it as a viewpoint. So with these viewpoints, we can go back to the timeliner that we were building. And now we can create an animation. Actually, before we go to the timeliner, let's make a, a animation and then we'll add the, view the viewpoints that we added. So we'll just select all of them. So we have one, two, three, and we can create an animation. So um, 
we can edit the time of our animation. So let's say we want our animation to be 10 seconds. And uh, if we go to animation, we can play our animation, which is basically what we have. And we're going to combine the timeliner and these three animation variables, 10 seconds, and it should look nice. So we'll go back to the timeliner. And this time in settings, we're going to select our animation that we have here. OK. And now we will be running our timeliner. And it has the animation that we created, as well as the timeliner construction. All right. Going back to our presentation. So. Um, this is used to create construction progress animations. Sets can be added to animation schedule. Items being added during animation. Settings can be changed, such as start and end dates and video duration. Viewpoint animations can be added to timeliner. Settings can be changed by right-clicking viewpoint or animation. Oh, the animation can be exported as a video. If you use images as the format, we can get rendered images of the animation that can then be turned into an HD video. All right, so uh, let's do that. So now that we have our animation, let's go to export animation. We'll use AVI, and if we use JPEGs, then we can have a lot uh, at frame per, per second. I'm going to do uh, 20, but if we do uh, 20 frames per second, with JPEGs, all of those JPEGs would be rendered, and then you would be able to create a HD movie. The difference is that it might take an, an, an entire day or maybe even longer to uh, to create that. So we'll just be creating an AVI file. Oh, I think I, okay, so I actually selected the JPEG by mistake, so uh, that's why it was taking so long. Oh, actually, AVI. So I'll just do uh, five frames per second so that it's faster. And uh, we'll try to redo this to see if it's a bit faster. And we can basically then send the, this, this uh, file that we're creating to other people. And they don't need any software. They have the, the video on their Windows machine. And I did not expect this to take this long. Yesterday was a lot faster. <laughs> Everything changes with a live demo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yesterday it took like five seconds. <clears throat> Anyways, so now we have our our Navisworks video and uh it's what we looked at before. It looks kind of choppy because I only did five frames per second. But with time, this would look better. And yeah, that's it for the presentation. Any questions?